Mr. Speaker, after nine years, the NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, time's up. Just last week, just last week, we heard a million people in Ontario were accessing food banks. Meanwhile, the NDP leader supports the Prime Minister, keeps him in power, and supports his crushing carbon tax increases. I just finished a successful by-election campaign. Why will the NDP Liberals not let Canadians decide about the carbon tax and call a carbon tax election now? the government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to welcome uh, my new colleague to this place. Uh, it's important, of course, to always be open and transparent with Canadians, and what we see is someone else who knows how to repeat three-word slogans as well as to be able to deliver for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, uh, what the members opposite are doing are trying to what they actually plan to deliver for Canadians. So I hope that the member opposite can be more honest and transparent with Canadians moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good hope. The Honourable Member from Brantford, Brent. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and now time is up. Canadians are feeling more unsafe than ever. Violent crime up 50 percent, sex assaults up 75 percent, car theft 46 percent, and shockingly violent gun crime over 100 percent. Will the Liberals finally join Conservatives in protecting Canadians and demanding jail, not bail, for repeat violent offenders? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General for Canada. Mr. Speaker, my fundamental job is to keep Canadians safe. Here's what we've been doing in the last 12 months. We've increased... We... Hey, uh, yes. Colleagues, colleagues, I would appreciate being able to hear the Honourable uh, Member's response. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General for Canada, from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, my fundamental job is to keep Canadians safe. Here's what I've been doing the last 12 months. I propose new offences for money laundering. The Conservatives voted against. I've increased the penalties for violent carjackings. The Conservatives voted against. I and my colleague, the Minister of Public Safety, have put $160 million to aid the CBSA and law enforcement in detecting and stopping car thefts. Car thefts are down 17% over the last six months compared to last year. There's still more work to do. We're going to continue to do that work. While the Conservatives shout slogans, we are going to keep Canadians safe. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brent. Simple fact is Canadians, sorry, criminals have nothing to fear under the NDP Liberal legislation. Yeah. Bill C-48 has done nothing to stop the crime in our communities. Instead of listening to premiers and law enforcement who have called for bail reform, the Justice Minister pretends that C-48 is a success. Mr. Speaker, it's an abject failure. When will the Minister stop protecting criminals, start standing up for, for victims by reversing their catch and release policies? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, I spent the summer listening to victims, and what they talked to me about is intelligent policies and approaches to crime. What we did is pass in this chamber, thankfully with unanimous support, bail reform. The job is now on the provinces to ensure that that bail reform bears fruit. What am I talking about, Mr. Speaker? The people that decide bail decisions are justices of the peace and primarily provincial court judges appointed at the provincial level. The people that appeal bail decisions, such as my colleague in his former capacity, our provincial crown attorneys were under the direction of provincial premiers and provincial attorneys general. When there's not enough jail space to keep people in jail who don't deserve bail, that's a provincial responsibility. I'll ask members who uh, ask questions to please uh, ask their question and then listen to the response uh, and then take up the question again uh, when their turn is, uh, has been offered. The Honourable Member from Richmond Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This summer, I was pleased to join the Minister of Health to sign two new health care agreements with British Columbia. 
These agreements will enhance wages for personal support workers and improve accessibility and affordability to medication across BC. Canadians believe in our health care system, and we must continue to build up a health care system for all generations. Could the Minister of Health please share with us how these agreements will support health care in BC? The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Richmond Centre for his advocacy uh, in health and to make sure that we have the greatest health system in the world. And, you know, we're seeing that unfold in British Columbia with an agreement that's going to make sure that uh, health care assistance with some call personal here, here. support workers are getting a fair here. wage, making sure that we work in partnership that the people who keep our hospitals uh, and, and our long-term care facilities and assisted care facilities going, as well as an essential agreement on pharmacare making sure that every person in British Columbia has access to the contraceptives they need, has access to the diabetes medication they need, and yes, to menopause hormone treatment, Mr. Speaker. These are huge things for our health system. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals' failure to fund services through Jordan's principle is endangering First Nations youth. In fact, in Winnipeg, Spirit Horse Action Therapy is owed almost $400,000. And the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society says this government's neglect is putting kids at risk. When will the Liberals respect their legal obligations to Jordan's principle and ensure the health and safety of First Nations youth? Here, here. The Honourable Minister.